Dealer Fraud with Car Titles. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homer Guy, and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? You have arrived at the home of super high intensity training for car buyers, and today I'm joined by the amazing Elizabeth, as usual, as we react to a dealer car title fraud situation. Well, there's a lot of bad things that car dealers do, but this story about game playing with the title of your car, well, it's about as frustrating as it gets for car buyers. As our followers know, the Homework Guy channel prepares car buyers with tips for homework and research to do before the sale, specific car buying strategies, and what you need to be aware of to get a fair and honest car deal. That's right. In this case, involving the title of your car, there's some preventative steps you can take to make sure this doesn't happen to you. All right, let's roll this news story about a dealer that just never sent his customers the title for their car. It took place during the winter, so you'll see some snowflakes like some <laughs> real ones check it out you think about the fact that a, a car dealer can do something like this it's very frustrating well, car dealerships are the number two complaint for the state attorney general's office only behind unwanted scam calls and Boy, that's oh, no oh, surprise huh? yes yes no surprise <laughs> there that's actually true in pretty much every state in the union you guys the number two complaint right behind actual scam calls car dealers so you know, when car dealers say that we give them a bad reputation. I think they gave it to themselves, Kevin. Yo, they totally gave it to themselves. Now the Attorney General is getting involved with a pattern that could affect you and your family. Call 6 Investigates' Kara Kenny is here with a story you'll see only on RTV6. A Crawfordsville man says a local car dealership still owes him a title. He's been waiting for more than a year. Now, I'm curious if anybody in our listening audience, viewing audience, if you are waiting for a title for your car, Please comment down below and share with the others who are on the channel um, what solutions or resolutions you've come up with relative to that title. It's a snowy day in Crawfordsville as Call 6 Investigates looks for Sean Claus, Vice President of Claus Auto. The Attorney General's office says Sean Claus and Claus Auto failed to deliver titles to nearly two dozen customers. We got a little upset, angry. Joel Endicott says he's still waiting on titles for two vehicles he bought from Claus Auto in summer 2017. If we Let's chat for just a moment on why dealers don't send titles out to their customers after they buy the car. Well, there's actually a couple reasons. Dealers quite often, and I shouldn't say this, that this is all the time, but there's plenty of situations where the dealer actually doesn't have the title for the car that's sitting on their lot. Now, a lot of state laws require them to have it on hand, and it's actually supposed to be physically on the piece of property that that the dealer has there but the but, dealer doesn't want to delay the sale so for some reason they don't have the title they're still going to sell you the car because they want the money the, yeah yeah and and they're just hoping they don't get caught but but how does this happen so um dealers will buy cars from the auto auction that people hear about all the time and sometimes there's financial arrangements that are made with the auto auction itself mm -hmm. and so the the dealer can take the car back to the lot and they got it there physically, which means now you as the customer can see it, but the dealer hasn't paid off the uh, au the auction house and therefore doesn't have the title of the car. So, but that's not gonna stop the dealer from selling it. There's, there's other situations where they don't have the title and it involves a trade in, why is that Liz? Right, a lot of people don't keep track of where the title is at their house. They don't have the physical copy in their hand when they come and buy a car. And it's not in the glove box of the car, which you really shouldn't carry the title there anyhow. <laughs> right, stolen cars. Um, or the customer has a loan, so there's a lien on the title. Yeah, so they don't, they aren't actually, the customer actually isn't the owner of the car Yeah, the yet. bank owns the, the car. The bank is, yes. So in those situations, the, the dealer doesn't physically have the title in hand, which they technically should. But you come along and see that car and you decide to buy it. So those are the reasons why a dealer doesn't have the title and it leads to some real problems. We'll get to that here in a moment about what you can do to make sure you don't get stung by it like these customers have. Wanted to sell them, trade them in, anything like that. Without a title, we can't, we're stuck. The AG's office also accuses Kloss of taking people's trade-ins but failing to pay off the loans, leaving some Hoosiers with two car loans. In August 2017, the secretary... So failing to pay off a loan. How many of you in our viewing audience have noticed that you still have a payment due on the vehicle you traded in to the dealer? Yes, comment down below. Let's see how many are out there. It, it, it's actually not uh, that uncommon because especially if the dealer is dealing with a cash flow issue, well, they won't pay off the loan. They'll wait for somebody else to buy it. That car could sit on their lot for a month or two or three or four. Yep. And yeah, you're still getting a payment that's due and it can really hurt your credit if you don't do something about it, get those taken care of. 
Secretary of State's office suspended Kloss Auto's license following an audit of their records. And they in January have. 2018, the Attorney General filed a lawsuit against Kloss Auto, alleging the dealer was deceptive in his sales tactics. You think? Just last month, yeah. Kloss reached an agreement with prosecutors to pay $62,000 in restitution to five consumers. The BMV must issue titles for 23 customers, including Joel Endicott. Kloss did not have to admit he deceived consumers. Now, you know what? Wait, that's it? Th that ticks me off. So, sixty thousand they're paying in restitution. Um, but I wonder how long it's going to take this uh, dealer to actually come up with the money. I don't know. Yeah, a good long time. Uh, I hope these customers aren't putting all this faith into the attorney general's office because this could get strung out for a long period of time. So it's a significant sum of money um, for those consumers as well as those who didn't have titles so they couldn't actually um, drive their vehicles lawfully on the road. Yeah. The right. Kloss Auto case shows why it's important for you to file a complaint if you feel you've been wronged by a business. The Attorney General's office does not handle the criminal side of things. Crawfordsville Police Detective Bob Rivers spent months investigating Kloss Auto. Way to go, Bob. Yeah. So this is what should happen. I believe I interviewed at least 29 people. He recommended criminal charges against Kloss. I would like to see something happen because it really became evident to me <clears throat> that this guy was hurting a lot of people and just did not care. The what, what are the chances that the dealer cares at all when they hurt people like this? Not even a little bit. Yeah. It, it's, it's kind of an interesting thing because we see all of these things done around the country that are are very fraudulent, very illegal, very unethical, and then just all the smaller stuff like the lies and fibs and stuff like that. And there's one thing true about liars that liars always cover the lie with another lie. It's really funny how unrepentant they are even when they get caught. Peter tells us they're still reviewing the case. Affordable Auto Sales said they moved into this location in October 2017, right after Kloss Auto moved out. They say they still get consumers coming in looking for information about their vehicle and their money back. The new dealer wants to make it clear they have nothing to do with Kloss. Well, I'll tell you what, it sucks to be this guy. Yeah. Um, you know what the funny thing is, is that in today's world, see, it used to be years ago, that these small dealers like this were usually the ones pulling this sort of thing. But now the interesting thing is, is a lot of this is happening at the really large dealerships. You wouldn't think so, but it is. And they get away with it because they have their hands so deep in the politics, the politicians' pockets. So this poor guy and a lot of these small dealers, I've actually visited with a number of them uh, from around the country and a lot of these small lot dealers are actually some really good guys. Uh, it's it's unfortunate to see more of them being swallowed up. And in this guy's case, he's sitting on a lot that a con man was on before. So this is gonna be a tough place to be. Auto. Sean Kloss never got back to us, but his attorney told us Kloss Auto has not sought bankruptcy protection or attempted to reject the obligations owed to the customers. Hey, you know what? That, that's actually good news for the, the clients that are involved in here because if you want to uh, file a lawsuit against this guy, you still absolutely can and should. Instead, Kloss Auto and its former operator have taken steps to make sure that all of the customers are provided the vehicle titles and the relief sought by the Attorney General. I'll the restitution due to the remaining customers will be addressed as soon as funds become available. Oh, there it is. As soon as funds are available. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's. I think that's going to be a long time coming. Sorry to say. Joel Endicott is thankful the Attorney General's office got involved, but he's still waiting on his vehicle titles. Is this proof that the state can fight for the little guy? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So how can you protect yourself when you trade in a vehicle? Start by asking the dealer when the vehicle will get paid off. Then call the bank and make sure the payoff happened. Finally, make sure the bank is aware of your trade-in agreement. And if they are not, file a complaint with the Attorney General's office and the Secretary of State. Okay, good stuff there. That's the conclusion of the story right there. Um, there's a couple things, though, that they didn't say here. So, so let's, let's cover a couple of the ground rules, um, or some of the laws, rather. State law in most states does require the dealer to have the title physically on the piece of property where they're selling the car. So right. most states, that's true. Now, if, if you're sold a car that doesn't that they didn't have a title for, 
uh, there's a potential lawsuit um, issue there for you or opportunity for you. Mm -hmm. So a couple of things that could be a clue for those of you in our viewing audience who may not know that you're actually a victim of this. There's a little clue here and it involves the temp tags that you get for your car. If your temp tags have expired and you still don't have your tabs or your plates or your title from your dealer, and then they say, well, we can just issue another temp tag. You know, it's just taking longer than it should. Mm -hmm. And then you get another temp tag and that one expires too. And this little game or charade with the temp tags is going on. I'll tell you what, um, you need to dive into this like ASAP because uh, here's a dealer that played a game with you and didn't physically have a title in their hand on the day they sold you the car. Right, and they've already been paid, so why would they take their time and effort to keep helping you, honestly? Yeah, they're not going to make any more money on the car deal, so they just kind of like forget about you, mm -hmm. which is a really unfortunate thing, but it's very true. Now, let's talk about some of the prevention because she was talking about things that you could do, but there's also ways that you could prevent this from happening at all, Liz. Uh, yep. what's, what's one of the things that a car buyer can do? Well, the easiest one is before you sign out for the car and you start sitting down for paperwork, say, ask the dealer to see the title to the car that you want to have and have them show it to you and say, yes, here it is in our very hand. And that <laughs> response that Liz just gave you, the yes, here it is, any response other than that, is a completely unacceptable response. Don't yep. allow them to tell you, well, you know, there's some things in flux or there's a little delay on this or, you know, the Secretary of State or the, you know, um, motor vehicle licensing, you know, is taking longer than it should or whatever. If they don't physically have the title in their hand and they can actually show it to you, doesn't mean they're gonna give it to you right there on the spot, but if they physically don't have the title to show you, I think you just wanna walk away from that car deal. You're, you're dealing with a dealer um, who's really good chance they're a phony and you could be, end up being a victim of uh, some fraud. So yep. make sure you ask to see the title that they actually physically have it on the piece of property and then you never become a victim of this. Anything else, Liz? No, an ounce of prevention goes a long way. Yes, it does. If you appreciate this reaction and review of the news story about the games car dealers play with your car title, consider giving us a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Include hashtag the homework guy and look for us on any of your favorite social media options out there. There's a list appearing here on the screen and they're linked in the description box below. And if you love what we do and want to contribute with a tip, well, the PayPal and Cash App links that you see here will be also be easy to find in that description box down below or on our website. But no problem if you can't do a tip. Liz, what's the best way for our viewers to help us out? I'll help us get the word out. Share these videos with your family and friends. They want them to get lucky just like you, right? Right. So put it up, encourage others to subscribe, and don't forget, ring that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Well, we're here to represent the car buyer, and that's exactly what we do. You can let us know in the comment section down below how well we do that for you. Well, thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter here with the amazing Elizabeth. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.